Hello, welcome back to my channel, Charlie's Lessons, and in this video, we're taking a look at ChatGPT, and I'm gonna show you how you can use this artificial intelligence in your classroom. So to get set up on ChatGPT, you just need to visit chat.openai.com and either make an account or log in if you've already made one. I've already made one, I use my Google account to do that. And when you arrive at the main website, you've just got some explanations on how the uh, website works, and then at the bottom you have a search bar. And this is what you're going to tell the artificial intelligence what to write. Let me do an example for you. Give me a brief history of England. There we go, it's done. And if we just have a look at that, this is, this is pretty much perfect. Okay, England was a major global power. Okay, okay, good, this looks great. Now, how can we use this in your classroom? Let's take a look at four ideas that I have. The first way I can use this in the classroom is to compare formal and informal English. So what I've done, I've just put in a request to describe a typical winter's day in France. I'm going to go click here and it's beginning to produce what I would consider a formal text. Now I'm going to ask it to make it more informal. So immediately I can already see some examples of formal and informal English. So what I would do is I'd ask my students to look for those. Um, just between me and you though, um, we can already see, sorry, that's my cat. We can already see here, for example, in the initial version, we've got generally the weather is cold and often damp. And in the more informal version, we've got uh, the weather is chilly. So I would consider chilly definitely to be an example of more informal English. And in the second text, we go overall, it's a good day to bundle up and enjoy a hot cup of coffee or cocoa. Hmm. So again, you can draw your students' attention to the use of a phrasal verb, which is usually considered informal uh, in English. Depending on what you ask the AI to write about, will obviously you'll produce more or less informal or formal language. But I think immediately, uh, this would be a good activity for students to do in class. So the second idea that I've tried in class using artificial intelligence is comparing the level of text. So all we need to do again is ask the AI to produce a text for us. So for example, let's ask it to talk about describing the problems that social media is producing in society. Okay, so what we should be seeing here first is the higher level text. Okay, so here I've got my almost essay-like answer to the uh, prompt that I put in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a text checker so one that I like to use is called road to grammar so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this text copy it and I'm going to post it into this road to grammar.com text analysis tool and we're going to submit it and the level it's giving me is roughly a b2 so an IELTS level five to six now remember this is not absolutely accurate uh, but it does give us an indication of the level of any text. I'm gonna go back to chat GPT. The way I ask it to reduce the level is, please rewrite this so a child could understand it. And so what we're gonna do, as in the previous activity, is I'm gonna take uh, this text and compare it with the initial one. So. What I'll do here is I'll just firstly pop this into the uh, Road to Grammar text analysis tool. And the previous one was a mid B2. So let's see what this produces. Okay, so immediately I can see that we've got an A2 level. So it did really well, the AI, in reducing the level of the text. And so what we can do now with our students, again, is to take these two texts and put them next to each other and get the students to look at some examples of more higher level language compared to more lower level language. So just reading here, another problem with social media is the spread of misinformation and fake news because anyone can post anything on social media. It's difficult to verify the accuracy of information that is shared on these platforms. And if we go to the lower level text, we can see here that another problem is that people can post false information on social media 
which can be hard to know if it is true or not. Hard to know if it is true or not compared to difficult to verify the accuracy. So again, we've got two phrases there where the students can see a big difference between the level. The third idea that I've used in class using this website is to do a vocabulary prediction activity. So what I'll do is we'll come up together with the class with a prompt for the AI to follow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and predict some of the vocabulary that's gonna appear in its answer. The example I used was describe a typical summer's day in England. So before I press enter, I got the students to predict some of the vocabulary that might appear in this answer. So words like sun, sunshine, uh, picnics, pubs, countryside, okay? So words that they would assume or words that they would associate with a summer's day in England. And then what we do is we press uh, go. You can see, I can see picnics, uh, sunny, barbecues. Nothing about going to the pub though. Hmm, I don't trust this anymore. In this example, we were focusing perhaps on vocabulary related to the summer or related to holidays. It depends on what prompt you use. You could uh, have a focus perhaps on vocabulary related to transport or vocabulary related to animals. Uh, for example, you could say, describe a typical visit to the zoo. So the fourth idea that I had for using this uh, chat GPT in the classroom was to prepare written exam answers to exam questions. So in this example, I'm taking a look at the Cambridge first certificate exam, which is a B2 level. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for an exam question. So what I've done is I've visited breakoutenglish.com and I've gone to their B2 section. And here there is a post on essay questions, which is a compulsory question in the writing paper for the B2 exam. Okay, so I've just downloaded this now and I can see here that I've got to write an essay about healthy living. There is a discussion topic here saying whether the government should provide more facilities for people to stay fit and healthy and if I agree. And I've got to also include these three points at the end. Write an essay about healthy living. And it started here. Now remember, when I checked the level of the text for a previous entry, it was more or less a B2 level. So the essay is finished. Now there's one problem here. I think it's too long because the essay question needs to be between 140 and 190 words. Let's see if I can ask this. Rewrite the essay, but within 190 words. So there we go, I asked the AI to reduce it to within 190 words and I've got a much smaller essay which would be more appropriate for this B2 exam question. So the way I use this in class was when I asked the AI to write the initial essay, I included the correct point. So if we go back to the questions, I had to talk about sports centres, cycle paths and my own idea. Now, one of the ways that students can fail this part of the exam is not to follow the question or not to include these points. So what I did was I produced some other model answers using this AI software, but when I wrote the prompt, I included some points that were not in the question or not in the exam question. And I got the students to read those individually and tell me whether this model answer would fail or pass. Thank you for watching this video on ChatGPT. I'm sure there are lots of other ways you can use this new software in the classroom. So if you have some ideas yourself, leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.